This channel brings daily updates about the San Francisco 49ers. If I were you, I'd already hit the like button on the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell, because there are incredible updates and you wouldn't want to miss them, right? Let's go, San Francisco 49ers, yeah! Brandon Ayuk not only backed up his words about taking off during the 2023 season, but also exceeded all expectations, emerging as a true phenomenon in the NFL landscape. His performance was nothing short of extraordinary, solidifying his position as one of the league's top players. Throughout the season, Ayuk not only surpassed the 1,000 receiving yards mark for the second consecutive year, but also elevated his game to new heights compared to the previous season. His statistics speak for themselves. He accumulated an impressive 1,342 receiving yards, a notable increase of over 300 yards from the previous year, showcasing a phenomenal average of 17.9 yards per reception. Additionally, he recorded 28 receptions that surpassed the 20-yard mark, demonstrating his ability to create big plays and make an immediate impact in the game. These impressive numbers did not go unnoticed by the league, and Brandon Ayuk was rightfully recognized as a second-team All-Pro player in 2023, an undeniable testimony to his skill and consistency throughout the season. Ayuk's meteoric rise since joining the league is truly remarkable, and he has continued to elevate his game to new heights every season. With the final year of his rookie contract approaching, the San Francisco 49ers find themselves facing a crucial decision regarding the extension of the player's contract. It's a choice that seems not only obvious but essential, given Ayuk's vital contribution to the team's success. However, there are several considerations to be made, including the emergence of other talents on the team and the need to effectively manage the available salary cap space. Despite these challenges, given Ayuk's upward trajectory and his undeniable impact on the field, keeping the player for the next few years is not only a wise choice, but also a fundamental strategy for the 49ers' future. Thus, it's not just about fulfilling the words about taking off, but rather about establishing Brandon Ayuk as a central and indispensable piece in what promises to be a continuous journey of success and achievements for the team. The San Francisco 49ers' offensive strategy has revolved heavily around Debo Samuel in recent years. However, with his recent performance and the substantial cost of his salary, it's time to explore alternative options to drive the team's success. Debo Samuel, despite an outstanding 2021 season, faced challenges in 2022 due to weight issues, as he openly acknowledged. Despite his efforts to regain fitness in 2023, his performance didn't quite reach the heights of the previous season, culminating in a disappointing Super Bowl outing where he managed just three receptions out of 11 targets. Currently, the 49ers lack the flexibility to relegate Samuel to a third or fourth option in the passing game, even though it may be ideal at this stage of his career due to his hefty salary. Projected to cost the team over $28 million against the salary cap next season, he becomes a costly option, inhibiting the rise of other talented players. Hence, it's time for the 49ers to entertain the idea of trading Samuel. While this may not immediately free up significant salary cap space, it would create opportunities for more promising players and contribute to a more balanced distribution of targets in the offense. Moreover, a trade could potentially net the 49ers a second or third round pick in the upcoming NFL draft, which is notably rich in receiver talent. By trading Samuel before the draft, the 49ers would have the chance to utilize this pick to bring in new talent, further bolstering the offense and laying the groundwork for future success. While it may not be an easy decision, it's a strategic move that could benefit both the team and Samuel himself, affording him a fresh start in an environment better suited to his skills and expectations. This approach aligns with the team's long-term goals and could ultimately contribute to their sustained competitiveness in the league. The San Francisco 49ers' journey to acquiring Brock Purdy has been a tale of twists and turns. 
stemming from the missed opportunity with Patrick Mahomes in the 2017 NFL Draft to the emergence of Purdy as a rising star guiding the team to Super Bowl 58 in Las Vegas last month. In retrospect, the 49ers' decision-making during the 2017 draft loans large. With the second overall pick, they had the chance to select Patrick Mahomes, who would go on to become one of the premier quarterbacks in the league. However, they opted not to pursue Mahomes, believing that Kirk Cousins would be available in the subsequent offseason after leaving the Washington Commanders. Their plans took a sharp turn when they were presented with the opportunity to acquire Jimmy Garoppolo from the New England Patriots midseason. This move altered their quarterback trajectory as they traded for Garoppolo, relinquishing a second-round pick in the process, effectively ending their pursuit of Cousins. Subsequently, the 49ers explored other quarterback options, including drafting C.J. Beathard in the third round of the same draft class as Mahomes. However, when Beathard departed for the Jacksonville Jaguars years later, the 49ers received a compensatory seventh-round pick, which they used to select Purdy in 2022. Purdy's impact on the 49ers has been palpable, particularly after stepping up due to injuries to Garoppolo and former first-round pick Trey Lance. In just his second season, Purdy led the team to two NFC Championship games and a Super Bowl appearance, showcasing his talent and poise under pressure. During the recent season, Purdy put up impressive numbers, throwing for 4,280 yards and 31 touchdowns. Despite his stellar performance, the 49ers fell short against the Chiefs in Super Bowl 58. Nonetheless, Purdy's rookie contract and late-round draft status mean he's set to earn a modest $870,000 this year, but his future potential suggests a significant payday awaits him when the time comes for a contract extension. Reflecting on the Super Bowl loss, Purdy expressed the team's disappointment but also highlighted the camaraderie within the locker room. He emphasized the collective desire for success among the team members and their commitment to regrouping and moving forward. Mahomes himself praised Purdy's abilities, acknowledging him as a winner and commending his playmaking skills over the past two years. Mahomes highlighted Purdy's knack for extending plays and delivering accurate passes, recognizing him as a formidable force on the field. As Purdy continues to develop and make his mark in the NFL, his, yeah, the 49ers are facing the imminent possibility of trading Christian McCaffrey this season, envisioning the acquisition of a robust package that potentially includes a first-round draft pick. This move is driven by the undeniable fact that the 49ers currently boast the NFL's second most expensive backfield, only surpassed by the Saints. The Saints have been spending significant amounts on running backs due to the presence of a quarterback many consider mediocre, Derek Carr. Similarly, the 49ers have experienced a similar situation with Jimmy Garoppolo. Consequently, the initial acquisition of Christian McCaffrey was motivated by the need to overcome Garoppolo's limitations. When faced with the presence of a mediocre quarterback, it strategically becomes necessary to allocate substantial resources to the ground game, maximizing this facet of the offense, as the quarterback's performance can restrict aerial operations, regardless of available weapons or the quality of protection offered. However, the dynamics have significantly changed with the introduction of Brock Purdy. Purdy is a Pro Bowl caliber quarterback and a serious MVP candidate, representing a clear and substantial improvement over Garoppolo. With a quarterback of this caliber, the 49ers no longer need such an expensive backfield. What Purdy needs is exactly what any elite quarterback demands, a solid offensive line and reliable targets. Therefore, the 49ers find themselves in a position to seriously consider trading Christian McCaffrey at this time, with the prospect of acquiring a valuable trade package, potentially including a first-round pick, especially after McCaffrey has been recognized as Offensive Player of the Year. The team would still maintain a formidable ground game, relying on players like Elijah Mitchell, Jordan Mason, and Debo Samuel. 
Additionally, with the first-round pick obtained in the eventual McCaffrey trade, the 49ers could further strengthen the passing game by selecting a talented wide receiver or promising tight end, consequently enhancing the overall performance of the offense. Now that they have a Pro Bowl quarterback for the first time since Jeff Garcia, it is crucial to optimize aerial operations, as evidenced by the standards set by successful Super Bowl winning teams. There is a need for a linebacker for the 49ers with Dre Greenlaw recovering. However, reuniting with Aziz Alshair would be an excellent fill-in. It is unlikely to expect a big free agent signing from the San Francisco 49ers. Their current salary cap restrictions will not allow this to happen, as they are $5 million over the limit. They first need to figure out a way to free up space and then work on deciding whom they are re-signing before considering external sources. Brandon Ayuk also wants an extension, so there are many configurations for the 49ers. However, there is a chance for the 49ers to make a big impact in their eyes and in the fans. This potential impact is re-signing a familiar face, linebacker Aziz Alshair. The 49ers should bring him back after his one-year stint with the Tennessee Titans. Al Shearer is still a strong and impactful linebacker who can boost the 49ers. But most importantly, he can replace the injured Dre Greenlaw. It is unlikely that Greenlaw will be ready for the start of the 2024 regular season. Some time will certainly be lost. With Al Shearer, the 49ers can mitigate their loss with a talented linebacker who needs little time to reintegrate into the 49ers' defense. The problem, again, stems from the salary cap. How much can the 49ers free up? Should they spend on a linebacker? And would Al Shear be out of their price range? If there is one position where the 49ers excel in the draft, it's linebacker. Perhaps they'll find a mid-round pick to replace Greenlaw or look to last season's youngsters, D. Winters and Jalen Graham, to fill the temporary gap. This could very well be what the 49ers end up doing. I'm sure they would love to bring Al Shear back. He would fill the void left by Greenlaw, and they wouldn't have to worry about the growing pains of Winters, Graham, or a potential rookie. If possible, the 49ers should re-sign Al Shear. Free agency should not be used to address needs on the offensive or defensive lines. They should use this avenue to fill the linebacker need in pairs. However, with salary cap restrictions, it may be a challenging task to find sufficient space to bring back Al Shear or any other big signing. The 49ers will need to balance their priorities and make tough decisions to improve their team within financial limitations. The San Francisco 49ers are facing a crucial decision, selecting the next defensive coordinator who will lead the team in the battle on the field. In this context, emerges a name that cannot be ignored, Mike Vrabel, former head coach of the Tennessee Titans, whose reputation and experience position him as a heavyweight candidate for this strategic position. Considering Vrabel as a potential defensive coordinator, the 49ers are aiming for someone who not only understands the game but has lived and breathed football throughout his career as both a player and coach. His background as a linebacker has provided him with a unique insight into the nuances and complexities of this crucial position, something that was emphasized by Kyle Shanahan as a key aspect in the search for a new coordinator. However, Vrabel is not just a former player, he has also demonstrated exceptional coaching skills. His tenure as the head coach of the Titans has prepared him to handle the demands of the position and face high-pressure challenges. Even more impressive is his proven ability to develop effective defensive strategies against elite teams, as evidenced in his matchups against Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. A crucial aspect to consider is the dynamics between the new defensive coordinator and the players. Here, Vrabel brings not only respect due to his coaching career, but also the ability to connect with players on a more personal level. His leadership and ability to motivate the team are qualities that cannot be underestimated, especially in such a vital role as that of a defensive coordinator. It is important to recognize that Vrabel may face initial challenges related to players' perception of him as an outsider. However, 
This potential barrier can be overcome with the help of strategic hires, such as the possible inclusion of linebacker Aziz Alshair. In addition to filling a specific need in the 49ers' defense, Alshair can serve as an informal ambassador for Vrabel, helping to build bridges and establish a positive relationship between the new coordinator and the roster. In summary, interviewing Mike Vrabel for the position of defensive coordinator is a move that the 49ers cannot ignore. His experience, skills, and potential to strengthen the team's defense make him an exceptionally qualified candidate. If Vrabel is available and interested, the 49ers should act quickly to explore this opportunity and ensure that they make the best decision for the organization's future. Now it's your turn to interact with US. Leave in the comments what you thought of the video, and as usual, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell.